Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wagrowski, in November of 2021, you were employed by the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. Yes, that's correct. And you were employed in their Computer Crimes Division. Correct. You testified yesterday that the main objective of your position was to obtain evidence for criminal prosecutions. I'm sorry, the main objective of my... Of your position was to obtain evidence against someone accused of a crime. On that day of November 30th? No. As, as your role with the Computer Crimes Division. We were looking for evidence if a crime was committed, yes. And you reviewed electronics? Correct. Social media accounts? That's correct. Other similar sources of electronic data? Correct. And the goal was to obtain evidence against a person accused of a crime. Is that fair? Attempting to see if a crime was committed, correct. Your goal was not to obtain any exculpatory information that would clear someone from a crime. You were looking to see if somebody committed a crime. Is that correct? That's not true. No, if we find evidence like that, obviously it would be relevant to, to look further into that, yes. And you did the same thing in this case. You reviewed the electronics, the social media accounts, and other sources of electronic data. Correct. You reviewed cell phones that belonged to James Crumley? That's correct. You identified that there were three cell phones, if I recall correctly, from the prosecution's PowerPoint. Correct. Two of them had the same phone number. That is correct. So there were two Android phones that had the same phone number. Correct. And then there was a third phone, which you called a burner phone. Or, I'm sorry, excuse me, the prosecution called it a burner phone and you agreed. Correct. That's a phone that you buy at, I think you said Walmart or Meijer or a store like that, a track phone, something along those lines. Correct, yes, something that's in a, yeah, you can just buy and activate yourself. And if you know, James Crumbly and his wife were told to get a second phone because they gave their phones to the police that day. I was not told that, no. You're not aware if that happened or I'm not? I'm not aware of that happening, no. You were in the, while you were in the process of obtaining surveillance footage, you were not aware of the identity of the shooter at Oxford High School? Not immediately. And at that point, you don't recall anyone at that point, meaning while you were reviewing the footage at the school, you don't recall anyone saying, oh, it's so-and-so, until at some point later. Later within, um, it was probably, I'd say 25, maybe 30 minutes, we were looking at the video and then someone said his name. Okay. So, and I'm not going to ask you to say his name. Um, the judge is, has made orders regarding that. But it's, it wasn't initially, anyone at the school was like, we know who it was, it was this person. Is that accurate? I think, I believe the person was identified by the deputies that took him into custody, but that wasn't related to us. We were in the, in the, I was in the security room at whatever time it was, and we were just looking for the person that was, that came out with a black uh, zipped up hoodie on. Okay. For exhibit 61, and if you need me to pull the exhibit for you, I will. Yes, I'll tell you what it is. Um, exhibit 61 is a Facebook conversation between James Crumbly and his wife. Did you want to look at it? Yes, please. Okay. May I approach your honor? Sure. Do you recall reviewing that yesterday? Yes, I do. Okay. And that exchange is about James Crumbly's son. Correct. You don't know the context of the messages. Is that fair? Uh, in what, I mean, the context of what was being said, the, the words speak for them, I don't understand. Right, the words speak for themselves, right? You know what's on the page. Correct. You don't know anything beyond what's on that page. That's correct. <clears throat> you talked about texts, may I approach again, Your Honor, to get the exhibit? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Rogowski. You talked yesterday about text messages between Mr. Crumbly's son and his friend. Correct. You talked about the amount of text messages that there were. That's correct. 20,000 texts in 11 months, I believe is what you said. Yes. Now, are you familiar with how often teenagers text each other? I have two of my own, so yes. You know that teenagers text a lot? Yes, they do. Young people text a lot? I'm sorry, what? Young people text Young people? a lot? Yes. You don't know whether or not 20,000 texts is an abnormal amount of text between two teenage friends, or if it's an abnormal, or abnormal amount, is that fair? No, I've done teenage cell phones before, and that, that 20,000 is a lot for that time span. In April, April 4th of 2021, you identified a text message between Mr. Crumbly's son and his friend, claiming that his dad told him, his dad being James Crumbly, told him to suck it up and gave him pills. Do you recall reviewing that text yesterday? Yes. Now, in that text, you don't know what uh, Mr. Crumbly's son was talking about. 
that his dad told him to suck up. Is that fair? Because I believe he told him that he wanted it. he was not feeling well, or if, if you have the exhibit, I can look at it. I thought there was more context to it prior to suck it up, but then Dole just handed him some pills. Right. You don't know what the pills were? I don't know. Could have been Tylenol. He, they talked about Xanax before James and his wife did. Not in that communication, correct? No. The one on April 4th of 2021? Correct. There was also a talk about melatonin? Yes, there was. So it's fair to say that you don't know what necessarily was being discussed between Mr. Crumbly's son and his friend on April 4th of 2021. Again, if I saw, I thought there was more context before the suck it up, but I don't know exactly what they were. Let me see if I can pull that. I'll pull the exhibit and we'll come back to it. Okay. Um, and the same thing on April 5th of 2021 with the friends. You don't know what the context of the conversation was. You just know what you're reading on a page. Is that fair? What were they talking about on April 5th? We'll pull that exhibit and I'll come back okay. to it too. I was going to do it on the screen, but it's not working today. No, it's great if you watch this. This one was flashing, but we could try it now. It's okay, Judge. Yeah. We'll move on. I think you can probably see it from either one of these angles anyway. You talked about in Exhibit 70 and 71, and I will pull those for you right now. Well, one is a, it's a placeholder because it was a video, if you recall. Oh, May yes. I approach, Your Honor? Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Exhibit 70 and 71 were a video sent from Mr. Crumbly's son to his friend, correct? Correct. And that was a video at 9.31 p.m.? That's correct. On August 19th of 2021? Correct. We saw the video yesterday. It was of Mr. Crumbly's son handling a firearm. Correct. You hear the, the clicking? You hear a clicking in the video, if you recall? After he loaded the magazine into it, yes. You don't hear any voices? No. No other sounds? No. In Exhibit 74, you identified that that was a GPS location showing that James Crumbly was at the home. Correct. At the time that this, or around the time that this video was taken. That's correct. Now, from the video that we saw, you don't know if James Crumbly is standing next to his son, correct? No, I do not. You don't know if he was standing across from his son, correct? I do not. You don't know if he was in a different room, had no idea that his son was handling the firearm, is that correct? I can't say that because when you rack around into a gun, that slide going forward makes a loud noise. And in a small house, you'd probably hear it. Probably, but you don't know. For sure with, with him, no, I don't. But it's likely. And you don't know just by looking at that exhibit what the surrounding circumstances are of that video. Is that fair? What was going on around it outside the video? No, I do not. You know what that video shows? Correct. And that video shows Mr. Crumbly's son handling a firearm and loading a magazine into it. Is that correct? Correct. Exhibit 72 and 73 are also, if you'd like to look at them, Please. there was also a text message between Mr. Crumbly's son and his friend. Again, it's another placeholder because it was a video. May I approach, Your Honor? Sure. Thank you. And that was um, a video sent to Mr. Crumbly's son's friend at 8, 20, on 8 20, 21? Correct. At approximately 12.30 a.m.? That's correct. In the text, while the, or after the video was being sent, Mr. Crumbly's son said to his friend that his dad left a gun out. Correct. You don't know if that's true. Is that fair? I mean, I, I don't know why he would lie to his friend that he talks to all the time. You don't know if it's true, correct? From this, it doesn't say that it's true or not, but I don't know why it would lie. The words on the page are the words on the page. Is that That's accurate? That's correct. You can't go back in time and get the answer, correct? You can't go back to August 20th of 2021 and, and figure out were you telling the truth that day? Go back to that day? No. I mean, correct. You could ask the person that sent the text. Right. Exhibit 76 shows that James Crumbly was at the home at that date and time. May I approach again, Hunter? Sure. Thank you. Exhibit 76 is again another GPS location showing that James Crumbly was at the home on August 20th of 2021 at 1230 a.m. Correct. And again, in the video that, that was shown, you can hear the clicking sound. I'm sorry, this was the loading of the magazine. That's correct. The yes. other one was something else. And, and just, yes, recording it. Um, exhibit 72 and 73 is, is uh, Mr. Crumbly's son loading the magazine into the firearm. Correct. And you hear that. Yes. And you see it on the video. Correct. You can hear kind of like a, a whirring, maybe like a fan or something in the background, if you recall. I don't recall that, but 
Okay. You don't recall hearing voices? Anybody talking at the time? Correct. No. No other sounds other than the loading of the magazine. And the slide going forward. And again, you don't know whether James Crumley was standing there or not? Correct, I do not. You don't know if James Crumley was in another room? It, the GPS says he was in the the, the, the residence, house. correct? Yes. You don't know if he was maybe standing outside? You don't know, is my point. I don't, the video is just limits to the gun, correct, but the GPS puts him at the house at 1230 at night. If you were to say, you know, well, this is what I think, and you said that similar to some questions a little bit earlier. Well, the sound of, of the slide moving forward is, is loud, and you would hear it in a house that size. That's an assumption that you're making, correct? I've loaded a gun several, several, several times, and it does make a loud noise. I, you don't know whether or not anyone happening. is, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, it's okay. You would know what's happening. In a, I mean, if, if you have a house that's large on a second floor, then you probably wouldn't. But in a smaller house, it does, you have metal banging together. It makes a loud sound. You don't know, based on those exhibits that have been admitted, whether or not James Crumbly heard that sound. Whether he heard it, no. You don't know whether or not he was aware of it. No. You don't know if he was aware of it and standing right there. Correct. You don't know. I know the GPS puts him at the house. Exhibit 79 was a chain of text messages. May I approach, Your Honor? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Is a chain of text messages between James Crumbly and his son's friend's father. Do you recall reviewing that yesterday? Correct, yes. James Crumbly's son's friend's father. Yes, I want to, yep. Yes. Um, you reviewed the text during your uh, investigation in this case? Correct. You look at them yesterday? That's correct. This is the friend that Mr. Crumbly's son texted with so much, the 20,000 texts. That is correct. Mr. Crumbly was checking in on his son's friend. If you, if yes, you can correct. Look. Yep. Okay. That's correct. He was concerned because it had been brought to his attention by his son that he hadn't heard from his friend, if you recall. Yes, correct. If you recall from the text messages, the son's friend's father asked Mr. Crumbly not to say anything about the whereabouts of his son. Until he went to the hospital? Correct. Correct, yes. And he said, wait and let's see how my son wants to handle it. Correct. Okay. In the conversation at that point between Mr. Crumbly and his son's friend's father, there was no expression, if you recall from reviewing the exhibit, there was no expression of mutual concern about Mr. Crumbly's son or sharing any information like, yeah, my son's been having a hard time. Or, there was nothing like that in that exhibit. And you can look through the pages that you have. No, there was not. Okay. On November 30th of 2021, in that same text thread, the friend's father texted Mr. Crumbly and said that he was praying that his son made it home okay. On what, in here? Yes, November 30th of 2021. Correct, yes. And that was after the shooting at the high school? That's correct. So this friend, the father of this friend that Mr. Crumbly's son had texted with so much, 20,000 texts that they had talked about, his own son had mental health issues, we see from the text. Even he did not suspect that Mr. Crumbly's son could have been the person responsible. So there's a speculation, as counsel pointed out, this yes, witness can testify. Thank you, sir. May I approach? Yes, Oh, I don't answer that. You talked a little bit yesterday about cache data. You said that cache data is saved after a person views something on their device? Correct. You went through exhibits 82 through 86, which I can pull if you'd like, but I, I'll just remind you. They were photos of a screenshot that Mr. Crumbly's son had taken um, of uh, a screenshot of a handgun that was for sale. Correct. A 9mm handgun. Yes. And then the exhibits were also the, the data behind that showing that the Images were stored in both Mr. Crumbly's son's cash data and Mr. Crumbly's cash data. That's correct. Did you want to review them again? I would, please. Okay. May I approach, Your Honor? Sure. This is 82 through 86. Okay. Do you, you want to look at them? Just, yeah, just, just in case you need them? Yes. Sure. Yes, thank you. So 
the screenshot was sent by Mr. Crumbly's son to Mr. Crumbly. Was sent to it by? Mr. Crumbly's son to Mr. Crumbly. Correct, yes. The screenshot itself was taken by Mr. Crumbly's son. Correct. Both of them, it appears from these exhibits, deleted the screenshot from their messages. Correct. People delete messages, right? I, yes, I do, yes. You do? Sure. For any number of reasons. Correct. Not necessarily because you're trying to hide anything. Correct. In fact, there's, there's also a way that you can delete the message and then also clear that cache so that whatever you're deleting is permanently erased from your phone, right? It's possible, yes. And if that happens, then you wouldn't have found anything in the cache data, correct? Probably not, correct. So it, it's fair to say that deleting a screenshot or, or a message is not necessarily, there's nothing wrong with it, right? There's, again, speculation, <gasps> bless you, speculations, that's, that kind of question is for the jury to answer. Well, Your Honor, what I'm asking is if just deleting a message is wrong. Well, you mean morally, legally, professionally? What it All of them? He's, he's here to testify as to what he was at, able to extract from, from the devices. Yeah, you'd be asking his opinion. So, wouldn't you be asking his opinion? I, I mean, he said he himself deletes things, and, and he doesn't do it because he's doing anything wrong, trying to hide anything. Right. I mean, counsel's, or, um, the witness was responding to counsel's question in a conversational tone. He's not... He can't provide opinions on why somebody might delete things or why not. He yeah, can testify yeah. and delete it. Thank you, Judge. In this instance, you did not see that anyone attempted to clear the cache data or anything like that from what you have in front of you. The fact that it's there tells me that it didn't happen. Okay, thank you. Mayor Pritchard? Sure. Thank you. We know that on June 26th of 2021, James Crumley went to a firearm store where he bought a six-hour nine-millimeter handgun, and you talked a little bit about that yesterday, correct? Correct. November. What did I say? June. June. I'm sorry. Yeah. November 26th, yeah, 2021. Yeah. Um, there's been no dispute that James Crumley bought a handgun on November 26th of 2021, to your knowledge. Correct. Exhibit 95 is an Instagram post made by Mr. Crumley's son about the Sig Sauer handgun that was purchased by Mr. Crumbly earlier that day. Correct. Would you like to review Exhibit 95 again? Please. Mary Pro Sure. Thank you. Thank you. In that post, Mr. Crumbly's son claims that the Sig Sauer is his handgun. In, In the post made by Mr. Crumbly's son in Exhibit Correct. 95. Correct, yes. I didn't hear some, sorry. He, that's okay. He, fo he posted photos? Correct. And again, from what you have in that exhibit, you don't know anything about what's going on outside of the frame of that photo other than what's in that photo. Is that correct? That's correct. And you know that based on Exhibit 88, which is a GPS location, that Mr. Crumbly was at or near his house around the time that his son took and posted those photos. And if you'd like to see Exhibit 88, I can give it to you. Please. Oh, I always, yes. Thank you very May much. May I approach your honor? Sure. So, reviewing Exhibit 88, you would agree that that exhibit shows that Mr. Crumbly was at or near his home at the time that, and if you need 95 back, I can give it to you, at the time that the post was made. That's correct. May I approach you? Sure. Exhibit 92 is Cellbrite data showing that Mr. Crumbly follows uh, Mr. Crumbly's social media account follows his son's social media account. Would you like to review that? I'm, that, I'm good with that. You're good with this? Yes. Okay. So you agree that that's what that shows? Correct. It doesn't show whether or not they interact. Exhibit 92 doesn't show whether or not they interact on social media. Is that accurate? That particular note does not. Correct. Exhibit 92 doesn't show whether or not Mr. Crumbly saw any of his son's social media posts. Is that correct? It would not indicate that, no. Exhibit 96 is a video that was found on Mr. Crumbly's son's phone at 11, on November 26, 2021 at 6.39 p.m. Um, and again, it's a, it's a placeholder. But if you recall, it's a video of uh, the, the phone camera looking down the barrel of a firearm. Yes. 
You do not see in that video, if you recall, you don't recall seeing a round in the chamber, correct? You no, didn't see you a saw, brass. You saw the firing pin. The firing pin, which means the that there's nothing there. Correct. You do not know from that video if Mr. Crumbly's son is holding the, the firearm in front of him with his camera, or if it's like this, or you don't know what's going on. You just know what that video shows, and it's the barrel of the firearm. Correct. Exhibit 98 is a GPS location showing that Mr. Crumbly was at the home at the time that this video was taken. Did you want to look at Exhibit 98? No, I'm good. I, okay. I, I remember that one. And you would agree that Exhibit 98 shows that Mr. Crumbly was at the home? Correct. And again, you don't know whether Mr. Crumbly was aware that his son was handling the firearm in this way, correct? That's correct. Exhibits 100 and 101 are similar photos. If you recall, they are social media posts by both Mr. Crumbly's son and Mr. Crumbly's wife. If you would like to review them. Please. May yeah. I approach your honor? Sure. Both Thank 100 you. and 101. We can continue to approach that. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. So those are posts by Mr. Crumbly's wife and his son, and they're shooting range targets. Correct. And it looks like they were shooting range targets that they used based on the posts. Based on, yes. There's nothing illegal or improper to your knowledge about taking your child to the shooting range, correct? That's correct. And letting them shoot at a target. Correct. There's nothing illegal and proper to your knowledge about posting photos of the target that you used. Correct. Exhibits 104 through 107 are from November 27th of 2021, showing that James Crumbly was doing DoorDash deliveries. Do you recall reviewing those? Yes, I do. Do you need to see them? Just in case, yes, please. Okay. One hundred four through one hundred seven. Okay. Now those deliveries are over a period of time. Correct. And we know that James probably worked for DoorDash. We talked about that yesterday. Correct. It hasn't been disputed to your knowledge. No. DoorDash was his job at the time. That's correct. There's nothing wrong with working at DoorDash, correct? No. There's nothing wrong with leaving your 15-year-old son at home while you're working for DoorDash? Correct. In and of itself, there's nothing wrong with that? Correct. And when you were looking at exhibits yesterday, and just if you recall, you don't recall there being any posts about or exhibits about concerning behavior or concerning text messages or videos or anything like that during the hours from exhibits 104 to 107? During this time, no. Okay. You talked about the horse barn yesterday, if you recall. Yes. You talked about um, the messages between James Crumbly and his wife about the horse barn. Correct. In fact, you recalled that James Crumbly and his wife mentioned or talked about the horse barn 86 times in their messages that you reviewed. Going to a yes, correct. And you said specifically from January of 2021 through November of 2021, they had talked about going to the horse barn 86 times. That's correct. Now, if we do the math quickly, there's 333 days between January 1st of 2021 to November 30th of 2021, if you know. I don't know if you're, I'm not great at math. But I don't know that. Okay. So let's just assume that's the number we come up with. 86 out of 333 is 25.8%. Again, I'm not going to ask you to, I'm not going to hold you to the number. Okay. But assuming 86 is correct, assuming 333 is correct, that means that a quarter of the time they are discussing the horse barn. And really didn't discuss much more than going to work and stuff like that. On November 28th of 2021, yesterday you testified that Mr. Crumbly was away from the house for approximately five hours. There were um, screenshots or, or GPS locations. Do you remember talking about that yesterday? What day was this? November 28th of 2021. Okay, yes. There's nothing wrong with being away from home for five hours, correct? 
Correct. In and of itself, there's nothing wrong with that. Correct. Exhibit 115, and I am going to bring this up to you, is a Facebook thread between James Crumbly and his wife. <coughs> On November 29th of 2021 from 8.23 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Okay. They are discussing issues with their horse. Correct. We talked about it yesterday. Um, we also learned in that time between 8.23 a.m. and 1 o'clock p.m. that Pamela Fine from Oxford High School called Jennifer Crumbly. Correct. She left her a voicemail. Pamela Fine left Jennifer Crumbly a voicemail. That's correct. There was another exhibit showing that Jennifer Crumbly accessed that voicemail at approximately 11.49 a.m. Correct. In Exhibit 115, there's no discussion between James Crumbly and Jennifer Crumbly about that voicemail. There was a, not in this right here, no, but there was conversation of she were Jennifer asked James, did he tell you what happened at school today? And I'm going to get to that in just a second. Okay. But in that thread, there isn't anything, especially around 1149 or even before 1 o'clock p.m., where it's mentioned, um, I got a voicemail from the school, this is what it was about. Is that fair? That's fair. In fact, it wasn't until Exhibit 119 at approximately 3.19 p.m. that Jennifer Crumbly mentioned anything to James Crumbly about something going on with Ethan at school. Correct. And... Can I ask you a question? Just yes, Your Honor. Can you, can you turn off the microphone? their son talked about what happened at school. Correct. Now, there's an assumption that, that Mrs. Crumbly is asking Mr. Crumbly about the incident that led to the voicemail. Is that fair? There's an assumption. Nothing else to base that on happened that was the school called them about. And that's my point, right? Correct. And there was no conversation between James Crumley and Jennifer Crumley about that voicemail beyond what we see in that message, in that in the messages in uh, 119, correct? Correct. Exhibit 131 is another Facebook thread between James and Jennifer Crumley. From November 30th of 2021. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm going to go back to 122. You can keep 131 with you. Okay. Exhibit 122 is surveillance video of Mr. Crumbly dropping his son off at school. Correct. And then I, I believe you also testified that there was additional exhibits showing that Mr. Crumbly went to the horse barn that day. Correct. That would be November 30th of 2021. That's correct. He was waiting for a vet. Correct. And that was consistent with the conversation from the day before about one of the horses having some medical issues. Correct. So Exhibit 131, you see that Jennifer Crumbly sent James Crumbly um, a picture of the math assignment that was sent to her by the school. Correct. And we've talked about this math assignment, and I'm sure that we'll talk about it more, but there were two versions that were sent, correct? Correct. And in that thread, there were two versions that were sent, from what you can see. Correct. James obviously expressed some concern. In one text, yes. In fact, he said, my God, WTF. Correct. And we don't have to say what that means, but WTF. Jennifer says that their son was upset, and she used the word, quote, unquote, distraught about the night before. Correct. James says in response that he talked about 
it, assuming we mean he means the night before, with their son. Correct? Um, we talked about it. I'm sorry. What, what? In referring to it, we can, I mean, we can presume that they're talking about the night before based on the response to Mrs. Crumbly's text. And if you don't want to presume that, you don't have to. Yeah, I don't. Okay. Can't, yeah. So James Crumbly says, we talked about it uh, this morning. That's Correct? what he said, yes. Yes. There was no conversation after that about Mr. Crumbly saying, based on that conversation with his son, that he has concerns. Correct. In fact, I, think, I believe the next message is, did you talk to him? That's correct. Thank you. We know that on November 30th of 2021, James and Jennifer Crumbly went to Oxford High School. That's correct. They met at the school around 10.30 a.m.? A little after that, but yes. The prosecutor asked you if Mr. Crumbly went to the house before going to the school, and you said no. Correct. We know that Mr. Crumbly was at the horse barn. He left there and went directly to the school. Correct. And that was based on the exhibit that you looked at yesterday. That's correct. On his way there, he spoke to his wife. Correct. Mr. Crumbly and, and his wife met with Sean Hopkins at Oxford High School for approximately 13 minutes. I think it was a little less than that, but yes. Their son was in the meeting for about 12 of the 13 minutes? Yeah, almost 12. James left the school parking lot at 10.57 a.m. Okay. If you recall? I don't recall the exact time he, he left, but it sounds about right because they, they left the, the counselor's office before that. You testified that at 11 a.m., Mr. Crumbly logged into his DoorDash app? That's correct. From the Meyer parking lot on Ray Road? Yes. That his first pickup and delivery was at from 11 a.m. to 11.19 a.m., if you recall? Sounds about right. Yes, correct. So he left the school and started working right away? Correct. Within three minutes. Is that fair? Yes, correct. The prosecutor asked you if he stopped by his house during that first door dash, and you said no? That's correct. To your knowledge, on November 30th of 2021, from 11 a.m. to 11.19 a.m., Mr. Crumbly didn't have any reason to stop by his house. Just that you know of. That you know of. If you know, do you know of any reason? Was he told? I don't understand the question. I apologize. No. Did, did you, are you aware of any reason that Mr. Crumbly may have known that he needed to go to his house from between 11 to 11, 19 on November 30th of 21? Judge, I think perhaps the better objection would be calling for a legal conclusion because that's central to the theme of the prosecution, that he did have reasons to stop him. That's what the jury's being asked to decide. I guess I don't know how he would know that. Really? It's based upon his level of knowledge from the last months of the life, Judge. That's, that's the, what the evidence has shown. I can move on, Judge. Thank you, Judge. I just don't know how he would know that. You identified Exhibit 147 as an email that was sent. Do you like to review it? I believe it. that's fine. Thank you. As an email that was sent from Oxford High School to James Crumbly. Correct. That was sent um, at some time around 1 p.m. 1:09 p.m. I guess. That was after actually the shooting had ended. Correct. In fact, you testified yesterday that the shooting was from 12:51 p.m. to 1300. Yes, correct. Um, to one o'clock. Correct, yes. That email doesn't show whether or not Mr. Crumbly received it. Is that fair? That, he, that, that right there doesn't tell me anything other than it, it was sent to him. All that tells you is that there was a, an email sent from the high school to Mr. Crumbly. Correct. At that email address. Correct. And at that time. Correct. You know that from 12.33 p.m. to 1.01 p.m., Mr. Crumbly was on a different DoorDash delivery. Correct. You know that Exhibit 148 shows that Mr. Crumbly went to the Meyer on Ray Road. At what time? Um, 1.11 p.m. Correct. Did you want to look at the exhibit? Uh, nope. Okay. So at 1.11 p.m., Mr. Crumbly was at the Meyer on Ray Road. You don't recall any exhibits yesterday showing that Mr. Crumbly was picking up a DoorDash order around 1.11 p.m., correct? Correct. You know that Mr. Crumbly called his son based on Exhibit 136, which is his phone log, 
Mr. Crumbly called his son at 1.13 p.m.? Correct. Would you like to look at the phone log it's to get about, the time? It's about the right time. Okay. Right, yes. And you know that Mr. Crumbly remained at the Meyer, which was the reunification point after the Ashford High School shooting. Mr. Crumbly remained there from 1.11 p.m. to 1.17 p.m. Correct. So Mr. Crumbly called his son from the parking lot of the Meyer, which was the reunification point, at 1.13 p.m. Correct. He also called his son at 1.17 p.m.? Correct. Which is right around the same time that he left the Meyer parking lot? That's correct. You know that there was a phone call, um, which was approximately less than one minute, and again, if you want to look at it, you can, I can bring Just it to you. Just to make sure, yes, please. Sure. Thank you. There was a phone call at approximately 1.17 p.m., um, I'm sorry, 1.16 p.m. between Mr. Crumbly and his wife, which lasted less than one minute. Correct. Mr. Crumbly called his son at 1.17 p.m.? That's correct. He called, he left the Meyer at approximately 1.17 p.m.? That's correct. Called his son again at 1.18 p.m.? That's correct. And again at 1.18 p.m. There were two phone calls at 1.18 p.m. seconds apart. Correct. Neither of them were answered. Correct. You also know based on your involvement in this case that his son was already in custody at that point. That's correct. He'd been taken into custody at 1 o'clock? Correct. You know that, again, based on 136, Mr. Crumbly's wife called him after he'd left the Meyer parking lot? At 119 p.m. is that what you're referring to? Yes. Yes. Mr. Crumbly was home at approximately 120 p.m. based on your, um, based on the exhibits, if you recall? Correct. He was home while he was on the phone with his wife? That's correct. You know that during the time that he was at home, he called 911? Correct. He called 911 because he discovered that the Sig Sauer and the ammunition for the Sig Sauer were both missing. Chef, speculation as to why he called 911, Judge? He said in the phone call why he called 911. Well, I guess that's a different question. You, you don't know why he called 911, but you did hear him. You did hear the 911 call, but... Correct. He, yes. In that 911 call, Mr. Crumbly told the dispatcher that he saw and heard the sirens, if you remember the call? Correct. He said that he went to the Meyer after hearing and seeing the sirens? Correct. That his son was a student at Oxford High School? That's correct. That he heard that there was a shooting? Correct. That he discovered that his gun was missing? That's correct. That he didn't know if his son took the gun? Correct. And that he was freaking out? That's correct. After that phone call to 911, you know that James Crumbly received a phone call from law enforcement and he and his wife went to the substation in Oxford. Correct. They returned home around 2.30 p.m.? Correct. There was some indication and some questioning yesterday from the prosecution about the white paper that had changed hands between James and Jennifer Crumbly at the school. Correct. Do you remember that? Um, and the prosecution asked you if there was any indication that James Crumbly had made phone calls to doctors, hospitals, or, or physicians, correct? I remember that, correct. To your knowledge, and if you don't know, it's okay to tell me you don't know, you don't know if there was anything requiring James to make those phone calls, correct? I know nothing about the meeting. And... You know that the meeting was at approximately, ended around, I think we said 10.53 a.m.? Correct. And the shooting occurred at 12, began at 12.51 p.m.? That's correct. It was approximately two hours later. You also know that in those two hours, um, I'll withdraw that question. You testified about messages between Jennifer Crumbly and a person called, named Brian Malash. Correct. You have no idea whether Mr. Crumbly knew about those messages? They were together at the time. Other than that, I don't know. Okay. You don't know um, if Mr. Crumbly knew what Jennifer Crumbly was saying to Brian Malash? I do not know. You know that at some point, Mr. Crumbly's son's name was made public? Correct. And it was, it was fairly shortly after the shooting occurred, if you recall. 
I don't recall what it was. Were you aware that Mr. Crumbly and his wife began receiving threats to their safety as a result of what their son did at the high school? I know in some chat threads there was talk of that, yes. Were you aware that Mr. Crumbly and his wife had been made aware of some of those threats? Yes. Were you aware that there were concerns for Mr. Crumbly and his wife's safety as a result of some of those threats? Oh, I'm sorry, oh, I was aware, who was aware that of That there were concerns for Mr. Crumbly and his wife's safety as a result of some of those threats. I know they received I have to object as to the, as to the um, characterization of what a threat is and what a threat is not. It's, as we know, Judge, it's very subjective. Okay, so can you be more specific? I, I can move on, Your Honor. I was just, okay. my question was mainly if he knew that, that this occurred, um, and he said that he did hear something about some threats. I can move on from it, Your Honor. As a result of your involvement in this case, you were aware that Mr. Crumbly's son was criminally charged on December 1st of 2021. That's correct. That on December 2nd of 2021, there was an announcement from the prosecutor's office that Mr. Crumbly and his wife may be charged, if you recall the date. I don't recall that. On December 3rd, 2021, in the afternoon, that Mr. Crumbly and his wife were criminally charged for their son's actions, if you recall the date. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't recall the, the dates all that happened. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Redirect. Thank you, Judge. Let's see if I can get this to work. Could you? I do not have that it's going to work like that. Okay. Looks like it's working. Well, Sir, can you just, this, this, this one just flashing. Like, um, this keeps flashing the screen. Light. Can you see the other screens? Yeah. I can see that fairly well, yes. Okay. If you, if you can't see it, you can give me a copy of these. We're going to have some look at that. I have them printed if you need them. That's all right. I can see it. That's like flashing. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Manager? Go ahead. Sir, you were asked about. Uh, the shooter and his friend in that conversation that they had. Do you recall those questions? Yes. Okay, and then yesterday we had a discussion about that, specifically the amount of text in that conversation, the content of the conversation. Correct, yes. Okay. Now, from November the 30th of 2021 up until the time that that the shooter was arrested, on, on um, I'm sorry, October the 30th of 21, to November the 30th of 21 when he was arrested, were there any responsive texts from the friend to the shooter? No, there was not. Okay. In that conversation, we talked about in April how the shooter expressed to that friend that he had asked his father for help. Correct. And you were asked about some context, and I think your, your answer was that there was more context to it, you just couldn't recall. So I'm going to show it to you. So we'll go through the entire exhibit. This is exhibit 67. This is the shooter. Like I hear people talking to me and see someone in the distance. That's April 4th of 21. Correct. And then right after the shooter wrote, I actually asked my dad to take the doctor yesterday, but he just gave me some pills and told me to, quote, suck it up. That's correct, yes. Okay. And then he wrote, like it's at the point that I'm asking to go to the doctor and then my mom laughed when I told her. That's correct. Okay, the next text is April the 5th, just after midnight, but I'm having bad insomnia, RN. What does RN mean? Right now, if you know. Okay, right now. I'm paranoia. I need help. I was thinking i calling 911 so I could go to the hospital. That's correct. Then he wrote, but then my parents would be really pissed. That's April 5th, 21, at 12, 20, 12, 12 in the morning. That's correct. I'm going to ask my parents to the doctors tomorrow or Tuesday again. Or Tuesday again, that's April 5th, 21, 12.38 a.m. Correct. And then, but this time I'm going to tell them about the voices. April 5th, 21 at 12.38 a.m. And then the last text is, like I am mentally and physically dying. That's April the 5th, 21 at 12.39 in the morning. That's correct. Okay, so that's that's in the same conversation. Correct, yes. Okay. Is that the context you're referring to? Yes, I, I do remember that now, yes. That's what I was referring to. And in this conversation, you were you're saying, this is in, in August, between the shooter and his friend, you were asked about these videos. 
I'm going to play this one. This is August 20th at 1230 in the morning. Okay, is that the noise you're referring to? The noise that it, it makes when you yeah, the metal fire? slamming together and um, putting the magazine and slamming it on the table. Now you were asked the asked about the horse barn, and I'm just going to use uh, council's math here. So if that math is correct, that means 25 percent of all so a quarter of the year they were discussing meeting at the barn. Correct. Okay. Any indication in any of those conversations that they were taking their son with them? No. It was not. Now I want to ask you about exhibit 130. And you were asking questions about November the 30th, 2021, when they were called to the school. So we talked yesterday about James, when he started door dashing on November the 30th. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. So, earlier in the morning, just so we have the timeline correct, we had 7.46 a.m. James Primley dropped his son off at Oxford High School. That's correct. He's back at home at 8.04 a.m. Correct. And then he's at the barn after that. Correct. Okay. And we went through that text, uh, that Facebook conversation between James and Jennifer Crumbly. When she showed him this picture, exhibit one, this is exhibit 128. And I'm going to go to the original one as well, which is 130. So we saw that Facebook conversation November the 30th, approximately 9.30 in the morning, when Jennifer Crumley sent this to James Crumley. Correct. Okay. So based upon the location history and what you were able to determine, he was at the barn at that point? That's correct. Okay, so he had not checked in for the day and began working that day. Correct. Okay. So it was not until after he saw this, and he, that's when he signed on to DoorDash. Correct, after the meeting. Okay. So you were asked, did he have any reason to stop home? But I want to talk about after he saw this, if he ever stopped home at all. Okay? Okay. So November 30th, 2021, at 11 a.m., that's when he first signed on to accept his first order for DoorDash. Is that right? That is about right, yes. Okay. And we went through some of those maps. We went through a little bit, a little bit quickly yesterday. So I want to make sure that we're on the same page. When he was accepting these orders and making deliveries, it wasn't outside of Oakland County, was it? No, it was not. In fact, where was it? All local and within Oxford. Within Oxford. Okay. And he actually drove by his house at least four times from the point that he saw this to the point the shooting started. That's correct. And never once did he stop home. No, he did not. Now, yesterday you mentioned how you responded to the scene and you went to the mire first. Yes. Okay. And that's the mire that James Crumbly was at when he received the alert of the active shooting at Oxford High School. That's correct. And you were helping parents find their kids when you were there? Yes. You talked a little bit about the school buses and, and what you saw. How many parents were there? Dozens, dozens, of just standing around in the cold. Were more coming when yes. you were to school? Yes, cars kept on coming. And based upon what we know from the timeline you were able to put together with the data locations, um, we know that one... 10 p.m., James Crumbly got the email. We know for with a certainty that he was at the Meyer parking lot at least by 111. Correct. He made phone calls in that period of time, and he didn't leave. And he left at 117 p.m., so he was in the parking lot where everybody else went to for at least six minutes, and then he went home. Correct. Okay. And he got home at 120 p.m. Correct. He was on the phone with his wife for a 10-minute phone call, we said. Correct. Okay. And it wasn't for another 14 minutes that he called 911. Correct. And it wasn't just, just parents at that Meyer parking lot. There were students there as well. Hundreds of them, yes. Okay. 
You know, there's 1,700 students at Oxford High School. I did not know that, but it was, it's a big school. From what you saw there, the scene that you saw when you pulled up in that white minivan you told us about, and you saw the school buses with kids looking for parents. Your Honor, I'm going to object. The prosecution is tough to find. I'll get to the question, Judge. Yeah, okay. Okay. Please. Did it seem like it was that number of students at Oxford High School? Paint us the picture of what you saw when you got there. Again, I would also object to relevance about what he saw when he got to the Meyer Honor. It's important because counsel made a point in her cross-examination to suggest that there's no reason for James Crumbly to go home. And I think this witness has established yesterday and today that James Crumbly was actually at the location where everybody else was going to. So it's important for the jury to understand what he was observing when he sped from Pontiac to that location. Your Honor, I don't understand what Mr. Wagrowski observed at the Meyer is relevant to whether or not James Crumbly felt that he needed to go home. I, I, I don't know how the two are connected, Your Honor. I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss myself. I, maybe I'm missing something. Okay. Did the other, all the other parents you saw, did they leave or did they stay? They stayed. Thank you. Nothing further. Right, you can step down here. Your Honor, very brief recross? Okay. Very brief. Thank you. Right. I believe I only have three questions. Okay. Uh, four. Can I get my exhibit sure. back? Thank you. In April of 21, you testified about um, Mr. Crumbly's son telling his friend, I'm going to ask my parents to go to the doctor, right? Correct. You don't know what doctor that was? He was talking about hearing voices in the distance and stuff like that. But You I don't know not. what doctor that was, is that accurate? Correct. In reviewing the exhibit that we have, we don't know what doctor he was asking to see. Other, I mean, from the word prior to that where he's hearing voices and he feels like he's dying inside, I do not know the doctor. You don't know. You don't know if he ever did ask. He mentioned it in multiple, in a couple different conversations that he was going to try to ask. Going to try. You don't know if he ever did. I do not. One moment, Okay, you know for the questions, Judge, I just have to redirect because I have to correct something that was just said in that exhibit. Just one question on that April. Okay. Okay. I mean, I hear he could be recalled, so. I'm sure you'd be happy not to. Okay, so we went, this is Exhibit 67, we went through this part like I hear people talking to me. The next slide, I actually asked my dad to take to the doctor yesterday. Correct, yes. Okay, is that your recollection? Yes, well? okay. correct. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. One question. I'm sure you know what it is. You don't know what doctor that was, right? Other than the context of the information prior that's, to that. That's yeah, asked an answer, Judge. Yeah, he asked an answer. He said it. He said it. Thanks, Judge. Okay.